All right, guys. Well, uh, you know the brothers, uh, the DT-227. I made a video of it. It was working pretty nice last time. And uh, my spindle drive went out. All right. So I end up with a BFD I had on the Cincinnati right there. So I took the BFD out of the Cincinnati and put it over here. And I have this final uh, 3.7 kilowatt motor uh, just sitting here in the shop. It was up there. Uh, I bought it one time on eBay, never used it. And so I kind of just clean it, paint it, and, and I made an adapter plate. It's already sitting on the machine. The reason for this video is a uh, closed loop with the Mach 3. All right. So I'm using the encoder from the FANUC uh, motor. So you see, I got my, uh, come this way. I got my AMB on the bottom right here and my index on the top right theoretically i'm supposed to be using the index which is one pulse per revolution that's what that calls for uh and theoretically it's supposed to work right so it doesn't work like that uh at least in my case if i get one pulse per revolution uh I don't get the index the right way, even though I go to my UC300 and I will show you what I mean now, and I will change the setting to one pulse per revolution. So right here, I got this little card. So, okay, let me go step by step. Uh, this is my encoder wire. You can see right here, uh, my encoder wire, A, B, and C, uh, I mean zero volt and five volts going to my encoder. This encoder, actually this is a FANUC wire that I bought. I didn't want to cut the wires on the motor and I'm using FANUC wire. This is a breakout board, a little breakout board from uh, CNC for PC. This little board here, it will turn uh, differential to single ended uh, on encoder. What that means is instead of you going up and down in between A and B, you will just kind of stay on ground or positive and just send a signal uh, over there. Uh, this is what my signal comes to. So if you got, if you're able, if you got a car that you can get encoder feedback. Uh, that's what, that's what you can, that's how you can do it with. If you got only, let's say four inputs on in this case, uh, on this case, the UC300 board, it's got uh, it's got four inputs that you can use for high speed inputs, right? So, uh, in this case, it's in port two. It's two, three, four, and five. They're high speed inputs. And so, what I'm doing here is I'm coming from differential to single ended going into my encoder input. I don't know if you can see it there. So all of this is on ethernet wires. I'm sorry I'm using this mess right here, but I just didn't have any other. This just for testing. Uh, I already bought uh, a whole spindle motor and drive that I'm gonna be using on this machine, but I wanted it to test if I, if I will be able to, cause I was using this before, if you remember, with my uh brother's spindle drive it didn't last long uh, i don't know that's the only thing i left uh old from the machine and it just went away well anyway this is an ls uh drive i mean a bfd is not a drive i'm using it on steps so i'm sending a steps a st a straight from from mac 3 from my breakout board you can see a steps I'm using my C axis to send steps to my drive, which I don't know if it will work on your case, but it, it should work on any in any case. Uh, 
for some reason my my pwm signal i was not able to just send zero like to let's just say spin it at 25 rpm or 30 or 40 rpm on the spindle if i use a step in this case this drive will do it if i use step it will i can just turn it whatever uh on the bottom right here let me get this out of the way on the bottom right here i got a uh, forward and reverse and and i'm using my common up here uh before i was using see this red wire right here i'm not using it now but uh that's how i can use my pwm if you can see i got it on plug right now so i'm not using pwm i'm using uh steps uh this drive will, will take uh uh 32,000 uh step that you can you can run it to from zero to 32,000 well anyway the point of this video is uh what i'm about to show you now so anytime i see someone getting uh getting mac 3 feedback or you know spindle feedback the video that i see it will show something like this let's say 1000 rpm and right there i'm uh, 1018 I'm gonna go to 500. Uh, yeah, 497, somewhere over there, right? And let's see if I can do this with both. See, I'm gonna try to hold the speed on it. Hopefully, you saw that I was holding the the tool holder on the on the machine right there. And the point is, if if you just try to use one pulse per revolution. Like on this case, I'm gonna put 50 RPMs and I'm gonna turn on my spindle. See, I got 51, 52. So I, I am getting feedback from my, uh, from my encoder. I'm gonna do 25. See, when I do 25, my Mach 3 is gonna try, it's, it's gonna try to control the speed you know, to around 26 RPM, 27. I'm gonna show you how low my speed is turning. Right? I'm gonna give you a reason a little bit why I was, I needed it to be, to do this low. Uh, this gonna be probably a long video, but uh, hopefully you can understand what I'm trying to do. So right here, I'm gonna do 50 RPMs. So I'm at actually, my actual RPMs is uh, 51, 52. All right, stopped it, turn it on again. You see, comes to 51, 52, somewhere. Around. So I'm gonna go to my, uh, let's see, let's see. my plugging control, right? And I'm gonna go to my plugging control and here on my setup. Now, let me tell you, this is an uh, UC300. Wait a minute, let me move the computer this way a little bit more. Okay. This is a UC300 control board, all right? You can see it on the top over there. It's a UC300, all right? So, on my index right here i got 128 pulses right so i'm letting i'm bringing into my control board my breakout board uh 
I'm bringing in 128 pulses per revolution, right? Uh, the reason I did this is because that was the only way to get, to be able to get feedback at low RPM. I don't know if Mach 3, uh, maybe the buffer is too big. I don't know, maybe somebody can give me a reason for this, but I'm gonna show you what I'm about, about to do right now, okay? So, right now I'm using 128 pulses per revolution. That means I'm Anytime I do a turn, I'm counting on the bottom on A and B. So I'm I'm counting at 128, 128 pulses anytime my spindle makes one turn. Alright? Uh, I'm not using my index, I'm using my A and B pulse, right? Uh, I see a lot of people out there trying to get one pulse per revolution on Mac because that's what Mac says. But yes. You gotta do that to Mac if you're going straight to uh, probably a, you know, a Mac 3 control board or something. If you're using the UC300 or maybe uh, a board that you can get uh, encoder feedback, you can probably use A or B input. Uh, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna show you why. Okay, I'm going to my push it right here. Some pin, and I'm gonna go to my index. Okay, got my index right there. You see it's on. Uh, and I'm two and two. That means four two, pin two. In this case, I'm using uh the A input instead of the B. So I'm. This is A. If I put a three, just for saying, if I put a three right here, I'm going to the B. Uh, sensor on the encoder if I put a 4 I'm going to the C input on the encoder and you guys know the C is the one pulse per revolution so that would that one will only give me one pulse per revolution all right so and that's what I'm about to do right now I'm gonna change my A signal for my C signal so uh, instead of getting 128 pulses going to my breakout board my UC300, I'm just gonna get one pulse going to it. And I'm even gonna say that I'm gonna get one pulse. You will see what I'm gonna do now. So before, again, I was on port, yeah. I was on port two, I mean on pin two. Right now I'm gonna be on pin four, which is C. And I'm gonna apply this. I'm gonna okay it. But when to e stop, now, I'm gonna go to plugin, control, and you see right here, let me see if you see it. You see what it says, 128 on my index. I'm gonna leave one, because there's one pulse per revolution coming in. All right? And now, I'm gonna start my. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna start my spindle. If you can see, my spindle is already on. My spindle is turning at the same speed it was turning now. I mean, sorry, before. You can see it turning right there. Got the same speed on my motor. you can see that you see that little blinking over there it's so fast yeah that blink on the very 
on the one on the very left on this one right here just the phone camera is not gonna let it plane crash it. You, can, you won't be able to see it that good but the point is you see I'm not getting feedback because it's only one pulse per revolution. What happened is, I think my UC300, maybe the buffer has got is too big or it takes too long to set the signal. Anyway, you see I'm at zero. I'm not getting any feedback from my spindle. I'm going to start turning on my speed. So I'm going to go 75 RPM. See if I can get, see 75 still no feedback. One hundred. There's still no feedback. One fifty. Still no feedback. See my spindle? It's going way faster. And I'm not getting feedback. I'm gonna go two hundred. And we got something right at 200 rpm let me target 180 nothing at 180 so right at 200 uh, we get a, you know we get feedback so my point is nothing before 200 rpm if i use only one pulse per revolution it's gonna it's gonna let mac know and it's gonna i'm gonna be able to get feedback so this is how fast i gotta go before i get feedback from mac if i if i use one pulse per revolution going to my uc 300 uh that was the main reason for this video. I see a lot of people trying to get one pulse per revolution going to their Mac 3 software. And yes, a lot of people I see showing the videos, they go like 1000 RPM. Yes, I'm close, you see, one, 1000, I mean 1100, let me try 900. 965 I'm gonna try 2000 that's right at 2000 so yes I mean the software is able to control the speed good but not a low rpm I couldn't use that which I I don't think nobody could use it yeah so my advice is uh, if you're gonna buy a motor to put it on your I'm gonna go back and do the same I did I'm gonna go to fortune pin go to my input go to my index and get my A signal back so my pin 2 which is my A signal back and then I'm gonna go to plugins control and I'm gonna get into UC300 control uh, chart or whatever and I'm gonna put 128 why 128 because the encoder on this motor it takes 121 pulses before you get a full revolution. I mean, if you got a different coder, let's say on the motor I got on the, yeah, I said, um, yeah, uh, I know. The motor I got on the Cincinnati uh, is uh, 256, 256. It's 256 pulses per revolution because it's twice the the 128 uh, so the wheel 
on the back of the motor, the tongue ring or whatever you want to call it. I call it a tongue ring because I'm a mechanic, so uh, tongue ring or whatever you want to call it is uh, it's uh, it's 256. On this one, it's 128. So I'm picking up 128 pulses before, don't get me wrong, before I send one pulse to Mac. Now I think my problem could be, and I don't think it's a problem because it works just fine. Uh, I think my situation on my getting my feedback is on my uh, UC300, but I just, See the way it does, it does good. Uh, I'm just gonna put 200 again. And I'm gonna turn it on. See right at 201. I'm gonna go down this time 180. See it goes to 184. So you see the idea. The idea is uh, I'm gonna go 50 RPM. it's right at 52 if I go 25 it will still pick it up I'm gonna go 10 rpm we'll see what happened that's pretty low maybe my VFD is not able to keep up with that but anyway this is how low it's going Now remember, I'm using pulses to control this uh, BFD. Uh, I sent for a 20, you know, it stays somewhere over there. It's a 40. you see right there I send it to a 40 and since I'm able to get feedback at even so low rpm I'm around what 34 35 rpm I'm gonna hold the spindle my tool holder I'm gonna hold it in and you will see what happens and then I'm gonna put the phone back there so you can see what how my hearses will go up uh, Mac trying to control the speed so when I hold it, it's gonna go down to zero because I'm holding it. And then it's gonna start climbing up. Max sending signals saying, hey, I want more speed. See, zero. And then it's coming up and I can hold. That was the most I can hold, 20 something RPM. So I'm getting feedback and I'm able to control it. Uh, it's a closed loop. Maybe not a perfect close loop, but it's sending the signal saying hey I'm not fast enough for what you asked me so I gotta I got just increase the power to get to that point So 
Well, hopefully you saw it. Uh, it climbed a little bit, maybe two or three hertz, trying to, you know, to get back on the same speed because it's now it's acting like a close loop. The only way to do that, the right way, a low RPM, is if you use the encoder signal, not the, I mean, not a, not just one pulse per revolution. You gotta use a, you know, I would say maybe two or 300 uh, pulses per revolution before you can get signal back to Mac and it will react. I think, I think the PID on it is probably too slow and that's why you gotta send uh, that kind of, you know, that kind of speed to it, that kind of pulses to it. And yeah, now I'll show you the reason why. I have to go that low on RPMs, all right? So when, when my drive broke, this doesn't mean it's gonna stay like that. I already bought a more, I mean, a, a servo, spindle motor and drive and everything. And I'll be opening it later and then put it on. But I have to prove this to myself uh, that it will work. Uh, so you see right here, I put me a, a piston, you know, a pneumatic uh, cylinder. Uh, that cylinder is pushing against the the tool the tool release uh, fork. Uh, it will release the tool. Not with that, not with that uh, cylinder. That cylinder is just going to be used to align the spindle. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm turning I'm turning my spindle low enough it's low enough that it will it will lock in with that uh, pneumatic cylinder that I just showed you at the top. So I'm gonna do a tool change and you will see what I'm talking about. Hopefully you can be able to interpret what, what's going on right there. slow before it will fall my pneumatic cylinder will fall in place and and it will align my spindle so I, I will do my two change you can hear the solenoids going you know coming in and out to for my two change very careful. 
it will turn, it will lock. I'm not gonna keep this. I, I mean, it's doing the tool change. Uh, it, it works. Uh, you know, I just I just click on my screen set and. I just don't, I honestly don't like it much. It already got some brains done that it will uh, deactivate the the spindle and everything. I mean the drive. Let's see if I can show you my uh, my M19. Let's just say it like that. My spindle orientation program. It's not even nice. Uh, I mean, I made it myself, and I'm not good on this. So honestly, not. Uh, so. I'm going to do an M5, so I will turn off my spindle before I do this, because I'm orientating my spindle. If I get my OEM trigger 15, which is my spindle already being oriented, oriented uh, then I will just message spindle oriented, exit this up, and, and, and that's it. Now, if and if uh, I will do an M3 at 40, so that's what you saw first. My spindle will come on in the forward direction of 40 RPMs per minute. Once that is done, it will sleep for a minute and a half. It will activate output 8. Output 8 means turning on that uh, pneumatic cylinder, pushing in to lock this, the spindle in position. If I don't get my OEM trigger 15, which is the same one right here, that this one will stop the the whole program. If I don't if I don't get it, uh, nothing is gonna happen. So as soon as I get this one, I'm gonna wait 1,000, which is one second, and I'm gonna turn off my spindle, which it will turn off my N3 with an M5, and then if I get my OEM trigger 6 which is a sensor on my c-axis going up that means my c-axis my c-axis is going up I don't need my output 15 anymore it's gonna slip for four seconds and then deactivate eight and hopefully if you want to see it you can pause it and, and look at this this is my spindle orientation with a lock on the on the spindle so i'm not using i'm using a lock to put the spindle in position for my tool change so i will turn it on on the forward direction of 40 40 rpms a minute i will send a lock activate my output so it will lock the spindle once in fall once it will fall in place my OEM trigger 15 it will send a signal and say I'm okay to do my tool my orientation you can turn off I mean my orientation is good you can turn on the spindle then I will turn off the spindle if I get to this position then I will deactivate my uh, cylinder and this is how that's how I'm doing my my spindle orientation hopefully somebody can Use it. Uh, let's 
my my cell alarms back here i'm using this one is just to clean the shank the tool shank on the way up and down anytime i'm gonna do my tool change it will clean the taper you know uh, spray air or blast air into the taper so my taper is always clean and and this is my uh my my uh tool locking position so you hear that you hear that my fork is going forward This is just my. It won't blow now because my tool is in place. So yeah. I'm still going to use that uh, cylinder to keep it in place once I pull the new once I put the new motor on. But uh, so far, uh, I know I'm going to change it. I I don't like it. I don't think it's. Uh, I honestly don't think it's safe need to say that it will work that it will work you know good or whatever <laughs> Remember, uh, make sure if you got a new C300 control board, maybe any other board, I haven't used any other, but if you got a new C300, make sure you get your spindle feedback from uh, A or B. Don't get that one uh, pulse per revolution stuff. Uh, it will not work. You just saw it over there. It don't work at low RPM. And if you want to really control your BFD, this one is going to be out of here. I'm just, I put it over there. I thought it's going to be, I thought it was going to be nice, but, uh, and it does the work, but, uh, I just don't want to be messing with it later. So I went ahead and bought the new stuff and, and it's supposed to be here this coming week. So I'm going to show you with, uh, you know that motor how it goes i'm gonna do a open it and show you guys how it looks and that's it but uh if you want to really control your bfd with mac 3 feedback do not use your one pulse per revolution make sure you use more than that and if you're gonna buy please a motor somewhere for your retrofit or whatever i'm gonna i'm gonna hum this I'll show you how I home this. I home it uh, the same way you just sew it, like you'd be doing a tool change. I do my orientation. It will orientate and then we will start homing on C. So on this machine, C cannot go up if your spindle is not oriented. Uh, Everybody can see it right now. It's uh, home. The machine is fully home. So what I did here, I made me this plate. I made it on the sharp, on the bigger machine. And you can see my uh, my pneumatic cylinder, which is pushing against my uh, my fork or my tool change. Uh, I'm still gonna leave it there, even though I'm gonna put the the other motor on it. This is a panel. Uh, I hope you 
can get something from there. It's a 3.7 kilowatt. 7,000 RPM, 8,000 RPM, a little bit more. Anyway, uh, what I was gonna say, I do not recommend nobody if you're gonna have, if you're gonna do a retrofit and you don't need a, you don't need tool change. Please, guys, do yourself a fa uh, do yourself a favor and buy yourself a Fanat motor, one of these used ones. Uh, I see some people buying motors, uh, regular induction motors. You can get this, uh, a final motor like this, pretty cheap. And and the good thing about it, you can still get encoded on the back of it and use it. Uh, and it will help you a lot. It will get feedback to mine. It will, it will definitely work better. This is it for being on the wall and just calling any tool. See, right now I'm my carousel is sitting on position one, and I'm gonna pick um, two. I'm gonna to, I'm gonna pick position eight, which is tool sixteen. And We say just for saying M60. You guys know what that means. And we enter it. That's it. It will just release the tool and go back to zero. And that's what two zero means. It will just go to zero. Just gonna get her here. It's too late already. But anyway, guys, I hope you can use some of this information. Uh, it's working, but I honestly don't like it. Uh, I don't want to be messing with it uh, more than what I have. Just to get that motor out there and this drive and get that software running where it will, where it will do the tool change. Uh, I believe I got, oh my God, probably 30 or 40 hours on it. And and it does it, but it's not, it's just not right. Uh, I mean, it's it too, it's a slow on the tool change, but I mean, it would work, but I think it could be better. So I went ahead and bought the drive and the, the whole spindle setup from uh, Automation Technologies and and it should be here this coming week so that's it uh i just want to do this for to see if, if i was able to and it's in there i i got the fan and the cover on the back i just have to put it on well thank you you guys get a, good, uh, get a good night